American football in Finland. The voice in your ears and the face on your screen. Perfect purpose. And this is American football in Finland. Today, I'm joined by both my co-hosts, Coach Q. Hold up. He's over here. And then Chris Green <laughs> right down there. I'm trying to point on the screen. What's going on, fellas? What up? What up? What up? Yeah, let's get into it. This is the one. Hey, we 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 back on video, guys. I think this will be the only yeah. like full episode that we do on video this season. It's been like three years since we did a video, so this is fun. Um, if you're listening or watching, AFF Podcast is available on all major platforms, including YouTube, and we're putting up our first video this year. Wherever you listen, be sure to follow, like, subscribe, and rate us. Anything less than five stars tells us that you are a hater. We're discussing the 2023 Maple Bowl. This week, the number one seeded Sinayoki Crocodiles take on the number two seeded Porvo Butchers for the 44th Maple Bowl. The championship game will be played in the city of Sinayoki at the Oma SP Stadium, if I said that correctly. Should be great atmosphere with the Crocs playing in their home city. And we're going to get into that here in a second. But, you know, it's first down. What's going on with you guys? Anything outside of the Maple Bowl interesting going on in your lives? Man, football season about to start, man. NFL. <laughs> about time. Have we like, have we talked about the here. have we talked about the Colorado uh Buffs, Buffaloes, and how they yeah. upset TCU? Ooh. Now they're in the top 25. I don't know how they got in the top 25 that fast. TC, TCU was ranked 14. They got three returning starters. They shouldn't even been ranked 17. They shouldn't even been ranked. They had three returning starters on the whole team. That's not even the same team. That makes sense. Nowhere near but the same team. I I do think like the NIL deals and stuff in college football has made college football more international. Because I've had a lot of people like ask me about college football this year. That never happens. Like no one ever asks me like how how can I watch college football while I'm in Europe or anything like that. And even I've even had people like send messages to the AFF um, pages and stuff asking how to like watch NFL and college games. So I think that college football is, ooh, and we're at a point in college football where pretty soon it's just going to be, you know, SEC and everybody else, right? <laughs> <laughs> the way it's looking, see Duke, Duke beat Clemson. That's that portal, man. Transfer didn't portal, man. We need. Didn't Florida lose too? And didn't LSU yeah. lose? Florida LSU lost. lost to Florida State. Florida State jumped to number four because they beat LSU. LSU was ranked fifth, I think, mm. fourth or fifth. Yeah. So, these rankings are real kind of crazy right now. In the first well, you, you don't know where to rank anybody because the, the portal changes teams so much. Like, yeah. there's really no way to really rank them, which means going forward, you're going to have to, like, eliminate people throughout the season, which means – if you're playing the right people, you're going to be able to get into the playoff by playing the right teams. But if you don't play mm -hmm. teams that are going to be, you know, seen, you you can't get in there. There's teams that are like, if you're not in one of those top conferences, if you're not in the ACC, Pac-12, SEC, you, you really don't. Here. Yeah, you're not getting a shot. I've seen a lot of things online about maybe doing a, um, like a playoff and maybe just doing like two or three divisions in the, the top FBS teams and then having them play through the records and then the top teams play like a 12-team playoff. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think college football no. is is that stubborn. It, it's just like, bowl like games baseball. Too. Yeah. Bowl games, they make the money off of those. So a lot of them smaller schools make money, you know, too, from the bowl games. So they probably won't. They probably won't. It, it, at the most, they can at least add two more teams, something. Like, yeah, I mean, give us, I, give us something. I just, I don't like the way that they like. It's a selection committee to decide that, while the rankings really don't. I mean, they don't really play into it. And I think, like, if you go originally, like what college football was, winning your conference is a big deal. That should be yeah. the prerequisite to get in, because then yeah. the strength of your conference is what determines who's the best teams. 
And then, it, it, and I think it, if that happens also, a lot of teams that are like in the SEC, they might change conferences so that they can be more competitive. And then you get that disparity of people yeah. playing in different conferences and not killing each other. And then the top teams actually get to play when it matters instead of, you know, you have Alabama and Auburn playing a week before the title game for their conference. So one of them never can get in because of yeah. that. And same thing with uh, Michigan and Ohio State, who have to play each other the last week of the season every year. There's no way Ohio State and Michigan can both get into the CFB because of that. I, yeah. I mean, because if it, if it was up to me, I would have four conferences, top two teams with each conference go to the playoffs. And then two at-large bids from everybody else, which means if you have the at-large bids, you got to, you know, beat everybody you ever play and do it in style. Yeah. But I guess that's first down. We really digress. But, <laughs> but I wanted to talk about college football, so that's what we talked about. So let's get into the actual show. <laughs> On today's show, we're going to get into the various matchups of this game and really dissect the best we can about the two teams that are playing as well as the players and even touch a little bit on the coaching in this game. So first up, we're going to talk about the Crocodiles offense versus the Butchers defense. Okay. Now I know Q said you have some stats. So if you want to throw something out on me, uh, go ahead hit me with some team stats right now for the Crocodiles offense or the Butchers defense that you think will be important in this game. Um. Well, actually I, I, I think, um, uh... I'll say this, the Crocs obviously had their first, they were first in scoring offense. Um, they were not first in passing offense, um, but they are first in passing defense. Um, mm -hmm. which means, which which I'd say, which means uh in retrospect of playing against the butchers defense, uh, what the butchers are good doing uh or coming up with big plays in the right moments. And I think Cinderella teams, or I don't want to say Cinderella teams, but teams that make it to the championship game off of uh, big plays. It happens. It mm -hmm. happens. And the reason I say that is because if you go down the stat line or if you go to the end of the year total of stats, the Butchers aren't favored really in the top two or three in most categories. Uh, defensively, definitely not. Um, takeaways, yes. You know what I mean? But at total, they're not the only team with more than 10 interceptions. Um, we, we got a pass-happy league, so um, it just happens. But I think the Crocodiles offense is set up to run the ball. They do throw the ball. Looks like they throw a lot, but, I mean, let's be real. Um, Zach Whitehead is not out here throwing 300 yards a game. In fact, nobody is, actually. Uh, and it'd be to, to be surprised, when you go through the average of it, nobody was throwing 300 yards a game. Um, yeah, maybe he was, maybe, he was hitting like 200, was, 220 on think, average. Yeah, like real, yeah, like I think, you know, solid that, high efficiency. Solid, yeah, it's like solid games. And I think um, if the, the Crocs do what they do defensively, if they, I mean, offensively, offensively, if they're gonna give Powell the ball, which I think we're all expecting, there's no reason he's going to the championship game and he doesn't touch the ball over twenty five times. He's going to touch the ball over twenty five times. Um, I he think, to. yeah, got to, got to. And I think that the important thing is, is for the butchers to realize that. Um, but Sarkula brothers, um, uh, Yane, um, Joel, like they're a big part of it because they get the one on ones, they do get the one on ones because people load the box and they try to come down and help on the run support. Um, what the Crocs are good at doing is running a zone read, I mean, the, the RPO out of that. So, what happens is he. Long, you know, long read to, to Powell, and then here we go. You think it's a run. He pulls it and throws a slant to one of the Sarkola brothers. They're bigger than most corners that they're going to play against, so they win a lot of those one-on-one -on -one matches. Um, and I think that's going to be a problem for the Butchers because Zach Wright, they're going to have to decide whether or not to let him sell out on stopping the run or he's going to help these corners who we don't have much faith in. Um, that, you can't. That's where I want to jump in a little bit and talk mm -hmm. about the the personnel in this matchup because you, I mean you're naming them, so I just want to go in there and just talk about them. 
Um, and so that we can do this on this podcast, kind of throw out some of these names. We know that on, on our normal podcast, we can't speak on everybody. But for this, we're going to try to throw out as many names as we can. You said it for the Crocodiles, their receivers. You have Yane Sarkula, Ville Olenquist, Yoel Sarkula, Casper Haru, that's number nine, if y'all don't know who that is, Christian Ristola, number 82, and then William E. Koskula, number 83. And I named those last couple of guys because they've at different times shown up. You know, they're not as as well known as the Sarkula brothers and Ville Olenquist, number one, who's kind of been around all season. But those other guys do show up when they need them. But when we look on the other side of the Butchers, I mean, we got Zach Wright. Nico Royko does decently in coverage, but after that, whoo, whoo, okay. <laughs> I, I'm going to name who they have, and, I mean, if you think somebody that I'm going to name can cover one of those other guys, then you just let me know. But you have <laughs> your uh, your new import, Jordi Ajeti, playing corner. On the other side of him, you have Topi Ajo Calio, um, number two, as well as Emily Emily Hassanen, number 32. So those two guys have been playing corner for most of the season. And then your backup safety is Ilmarie Ikahimo. I can't say his last name, but Ilmarie plays uh, safety number 42. And he's been getting in rotation whenever they move, kind of sometimes they'll move Nico Royko down. And then you'll see Ilmarie get into the game and him and Zach uh, White Wright will be back there. So when you're looking at this, and Chris, you haven't said anything, so I'm going to toss it to you. When you're looking at these matchups, how do you feel that the Butchers can, you know, keep up with those Crocodiles? Because it's going to be one-on-one situations. They're going to have to put eight, nine people in the box. You have to. It, it is what it is. Just like what uh, Q said earlier, you have to stop the run. Paul's going to get his touches, but it's going to come down to these one-on-one matchups. What do you think about the Butchers' chances with these guys? I mean, it goes without saying that the Butchers have had their struggles with the defensive backfield this season. They look better when they actually put Miko Seppinen back there as well. So I think they need to play him both ways. He needs to play corner, especially if they're going to load the box of like eight or nine guys. Like you've got to get Seppinen out there because he's probably one of your better one-on-one cover guys. Zach Wright, we know he's a dog. Like he's just a dog. He just reads the game well. We alluded to things when we were talking to him on interview. We were talking about how he watches film all the time. He just seems to be in the right place at the right time. Nico Royko, solid player. But like you said, beyond those two guys, they don't have a lot else. So it's going to be difficult to match up one-on-one. I mean, what they might have to do is they might have to stick Zach Wright on one of the Sarkala brothers to try and take them out of the game. But the only problem with that is he's then not in run support as much because he's out playing corner. So it, which it depends which one you want because <laughs> you've got to stop Powell. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You've got to stop Powell. The only way the Butchers have got a chance to win this game is if they stop Powell. You, you don't want to let Powell beat you. If Zach White had beat you, okay, all right. You don't want, you don't want Powell to beat you. Like that is the key to the game. It's, it's stopping Powell and whatever it is they're going to do. Maybe, maybe they might add in some like crazy blitzes, like corner blitzes or something. Just, to change that it up, dumb. I don't think the, I don't think yeah, change I don't, it can, I, don't, I don't think those corners are running, running back that like smoke. That. I don't Not think they're running any of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're going there with the but Zach White can move. Closed. Zach White can move though. That's the thing. Zach White can, yeah, he he can, can run. So that's a whole other aspect of like like we were talking about with uh, Brandon. But um, yeah, you're yeah. right, Chris. Yeah, I mean, when you say like Zach Whitehead, that leads me to the next group when we start talking about crocodiles running back versus butchers linebacker group. And obviously when we talk about the crocodiles, we, we say, you know, CP Christian Powell, that's the run game, but Zach Whitehead is part of the run game as well. And he's sneakily one of the better um, running quarterbacks in this league. And I think it's a, a little bit undervalued because Christian Powell is so good, but a lot of times he pulls that ball, he gets what he needs and it's it's effective because it, it makes the defense have to do more than just load the box and key in on number 15. But on the butcher side, I think when I look at their linebacker group, 
again, similar to what we said in the inter- what I said in the interview earlier, what when I look at these players individually, Nico Pennanen, Brandon Wellington, um, sometimes Nico Royko in there, those are good players. <laughs> those are guys that you can, you know, believe and trust upon. But when it comes to stopping the run, I have zero faith <laughs> that they're gonna be able to do it. And I don't know if it's maybe because of you know, the offensive line from the Crocodiles, maybe that could be more prevalent getting to the second level or something, or maybe just, you know, seeing Christian Powell be able to make those guys miss. But last time they played each other, they had nothing for him. And I I don't know if that's going to be anything they can fix in this game. And just to throw out a couple more names, because I'm dropping names, uh, we have seen Sadu Jalo get a lot of touches playing running back for the Crocodiles, kind of being the backup and and giving Christian Powell a couple breaks every now and again. And then on the Butcher's side, they have a couple of younger guys, Felix Salonen, number 98, and then they have a, a very young kid in Caspian Kostmanen, who also gets in a couple of reps. But uh, what do you guys thought about that matchup, like the run game from the Crocs versus the, the linebacking group for the Butchers? Um, I, I'll say it actually is probably, it, it's a better thing for the Crocs to run the ball. I mean, let's be honest. Um, like I said, the stat wise, you look at the stats, Butch is a fourth in rushing defense. Mm. They're fourth. So, um, four out what, of what seven. I, do, I think we got to make that. Four, 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 yeah, four out of seven. Seven. So they're fourth, fourth out of seven teams, fourth out of seven That's teams. They're, they're the four team in rushing defense. Um, Crocs are first in 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 Russia. No, they're actually they're not first in Russia. I won't say that. The Royals are first in Russia. The Crocs are third in Russia, I think, offensively. Um, but we do know that the the Crocs have a big offensive line. Um, they're going to try to control this game with keeping the ball um, on their side. Obviously, um, you don't want Brandon Gwinner to get the ball and have to be throwing the ball 35, 40 times because the more he does. Um, the more opportunities they have to score on you big and quick. So I think the Crocs will will try to manage the clock running the ball. Um, they're going to make Brandon Wellington, they're going to make him play. They're going to make him play. I don't think he was there the first game they played him. Um, the second no, game, I don't I think, think so. He, I think they had – I think he had just got there maybe. Or, I yeah, don't know he, he didn't play – he, he wasn't in the first one. And the second one, the – the other import I think had just quit, like I think right before that game. So I don't think okay. I think so, they didn't. So this have will be his first import. Yeah, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see him. Um, I, he he looks like an aggressive guy. He also he also can plays offense too, so he's a pretty good offense player. Um, very athletic, but it, very athletic. Yeah, so it'll be important to see his his role in this game. Uh, he he like you say he hasn't played against Richard Powell, but the guys that I've talked to that have. That's a strong individual right there. That's a strong, like, that is a big running back. I mean, just like size-wise, I mean, he's a he's a low period. It, it's nothing, it, like, you're, he's not going to shy away from you. So, so, you know, like, coming to this game, 30 carries is what I'm thinking if I'm the linebackers for the Butchers. I'm thinking at least 30. I'm going to have to hit with some linemen, running backs, all game. We're going to set the tone. So, whatever team sets the tone, I think the Crocs are going to try to do that. They're going to try to set the th- um, the, t- the tone early in the game, first quarter. Don't be surprised. First drive, they run the ball three times in a row. Do not be surprised. I you know don't what think mean? they're going to do that. I don't I don't think that they're going to do that. Don't I, be surprised. I, the reason, I will be surprised because of what they've done all season. Almost all season, they've, like, come out and not given him the ball right away. And then later giving him the ball to take over the game. I think um, just going off of what we've seen from the Crocs, they like yeah. to fill the other team out first because they know what they're going to do. So I feel so like I feel like yeah. this is a, this is a little different than than a regular season game because okay. I feel like you don't have like, and that's why I was talking about yesterday. Time it seems like in a championship game, time flies like True. faster You're than right. it does in a regular game. Like it, right. it's like the first quarter is over before you know it, and. Every every drive really counts in a championship game because that first drive, you get the ball that first drive, you're trying to score in a championship game because that's going to mean something. Mm-hmm. Butchers are full of young players. They do have some veteran 
players uh, who who have been on, like you said, been on the championship when they when they won back in the day. Those are vet vets. You know what I mean? Like you gotta you gotta worry about scoring on your corner first quarter, first drive. Mm. Deep, to deep on the first one. You got to worry about that confidence. Like, like, like you say, you jump in the ring with Mike Tyson. I don't have to fear Mike Tyson. Jump in the ring with him. But when he hits me, I have to make a decision <laughs> then. I got to yeah. make a decision then. Like, am I going to get back up and fight still, or I'm going to lay down? And in football, everybody knows that cornerback position receivers anybody will try to pick on you they will try to take your confidence because once they take your confidence before you know it you done gave up two three touchdowns it's been a bad day for you now your team is over here trying to throw the ball when they really want to run the ball so it's a lot and i'm not saying that the game will go like that but i'm just saying the butchers have to worry about that because they have so much youth so as a crocs if it's me i'm coming out first drive first play of the game i'm giving christian powell the ball because i know for one Defense is going to be overzealous. They're going to be like, oh, they're probably going to think like you thought. Hey, they've been throwing the ball. They, they'll never give it to them on the first on the first play. And then this I mean, championship was, game, here go, run in the zone, and he fucking take – I mean, he, he take it 50 yards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, these are – this championship game type stuff, like, 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 it's just – it, it seems like in some kind of way, there's always a person or people that step up in, in certain games and I and, and I feel like um, the Crocs have been consistent enough in every category throughout the season to say that they're going to be successful doing this if they just stick with what they've been doing. Um, you can go game by game and say, oh, they didn't score on this drive or they kicked the field goal on this drive, but the proof is in the pudding. The stats is a stat. They've been the top in, in the categories because they're consistent. Um, not saying the Butchers – won't have a, an adjustment to it, but I think if the Crocs run the ball, it's going to be a problem for for the Butchers' front seven. And, yeah. and if Powell gets to the second level, it's going to be a long day. But that's just, you know. Yeah, so uh, the next group I want to talk about would be the, the Crocs O-line versus the Butchers' D-line. And I think, I mean, we say this all the time, right? Games are won in the trenches. And I really think that this is one of those situations where – it just is going to be evident early and long in this game. The Crocodiles offensive line is better than the Butchers defensive line. And uh, I, again, I, obviously, I want to give some flowers today, so I'm going to go through the linemen. But when you're looking at, you know, the Butchers on the defensive side, you're looking at Jesse Folks and Tilda, number 55, big 5-5. Five, five. Great mm -hmm. defensive tackle outside of him. I feel like they don't have any help. <laughs> I feel like there's no help outside of him. And that's what happens if you watch this defense a lot of times is he he wins. He wins a lot of his battles, but it doesn't matter if there's nobody there to fill the hole. If he forces, you know, the defend the offensive players somewhere and no one's there to make the play, they end up on the second level anyways, or even the third level sometimes. And I think he leads this group, but the rest of the group has to catch up for them to to do well in this game and just throwing out some other guys, number 95, Ronnie Ponden. And he's had a, a really good season in my opinion, not great like Jesse, but he's a solid defensive lineman. They brought back uh, the fireman, Ville Kervinen. He's got to be like <laughs> 70 now. Like, I don't know how old he is. Hey, that's he, a month. He, hey, he's been playing for a long time. That's what we was talking about. That got the championship. I think he was playing with yeah. them when they won the championship back in the day. Yeah. He's and, been around and, a long time, man. And we're going to, I'm going to digress it just so if people don't know, because a lot of people that watch the show might be new to football in Finland. Ville Kerman is one of the best receivers to ever play in the Maple League. And then he did a second career and changed the defensive lineman when they needed him. And as you can see the last couple of weeks, I really only remember seeing him in the last like game in the playoffs, yeah. but when they needed him, <laughs> I think they went and said, Hey, we need somebody. And he's the guy. He's like, okay, I'll come out there. You know, I'm a strong guy. And he's going to give them something on the edge that they haven't had all season, but we haven't seen that yet. We really don't know. Um, he did get a lot of pressure in their playoff game, but again, we don't know how that's going to work against this Crocodiles group. And then um, the rest of their O-line, 
Number 90, Oscar Payunin, decent. Uh, number 97, Julius Volksentorda. I don't know if, if those two guys are related. Is Jesse old enough for that to be his son? I, I don't know. But number 97, mm-hmm. he's he's pretty good too. And Noah Nettie, number 93, another good defense lineman. Again, individually, this is a good group. Defensively, on the D-line, this is a good group of players. They have good technique, good size, speed. They can get after a quarterback. But as a collective, it doesn't always work out. It just seems like they they don't work collectively on the same page at the consistency that we're accustomed to seeing from the Crocodiles. And then if I go to the other side of the ball, talk about the Crocodiles offensive linemen, Obviously, you got the two tackles, Tuomas H. I can't say his last name. You know what it is. Oscar Stromstead on the other side. And then Otto Makinen is the center. He's going to be leading the charge, leading that group. And then your guards, you have Miguel Makinen, big number 66. And then they brought in Matthias Stockham to make that offensive line complete. And when I when I just name all those guys from the Crocodiles, there are no holes. Like, that's not a group that you like, well, we can know. Like, there, there's no holes. The, I mean, not to say it in a bad way, but the worst player on that group probably is Oto Makinen because he's a, a little bit undersized at center. But that, yeah, he's, he's also probably the best center in the league. So Yeah, he's probably yeah. the smartest. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say he's the smartest one. Like, I mean, I'm saying, I'm saying physically, he's probably the only one that yeah. you might be able to like get something. But he's playing center, so he's most likely doubling. So yeah. there's really not any holes in that offensive group, which makes it tough. Because you know, if your best guy is your nose tackle Jesse Volks until he's gonna be doubled, and Oto and anybody they can handle it. Like it, it is what yeah. it is. If you're getting double, you're getting double. Mm-hmm. And then everybody else is one on one. They're not gonna win those matchups. And I mean, I feel like I've talked about it too much, but that's how I feel about this about the O line versus I mean, D line. Or, or arguably, this Crocodiles offensive line are probably the best unit as a whole that's going to be on the field this weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They could arguably be the best unit as a whole. It's a damn good offensive line. It, it reminds me a little bit of the the Steelers offensive line from last year, who were just solid as well. Like, it, it's no word of a lie. You, it's a cliche. You said it at the beginning. The, the the battle is won in the trenches, and I truly, truly do believe. Even though it's a cliche, I think this game is won or lost here, because yeah. if the Crocodiles can create holes for Powell, it's over with it. It's over with. That's all yeah, she wrote. Ain't bullying. They can't get bullied. That's for sure. Can't get bullied. Yeah, and the last part, we have about two minutes before we need to move on. Uh, I want to talk about the Crocs offensive coordinator versus the Butchers defense coordinator. Get a little bit into the mindset of it. And if I'm if I'm thinking correctly, I, I looked it up. I don't I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think the Crocs head coach, Kerry ER. Arusi and the Butchers head coach Lassie Voipio are what that matchup is. I, I'm pretty sure Kiri calls the plays for the Crocs and Lasse runs the defense for the Butchers. So mm-hmm. when this is the, the key matchup, when your two head coaches are both calling the plays, both offensively and defensively, in this matchup, what do you guys feel about how it might go or who would have the advantage out of these two? I mean, Play that's what like, we're looking at. I feel like the Crocodiles offense have been play called really well this season. They've had, like you said earlier, they've had a mix of, yes, heavy carrying of Christian Powell, but then they've gone to the read option when they need it, the RPO. They've gone to the pass game when they need it. Zach Whitehead has been consistent all season. He's not thrown many picks. He's not thrown for a huge amount of large, like you say, maybe averaging about 200 yards a game or something around those numbers. But he's consistently there and he does what he needs to do to complement the run game that they have. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like a really, really good balance of play call. Yes, they are run heavy, but they know when to call the pass and when to do the RPO. And Zach Whitehead's a smart guy. like He knows when to pull it, read it, give that ball. So... I think the the crocodiles OC has the edge here. If 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 I was picking between the two, 
What about mm. you, Q? You got about thirty seconds to tell me something. Uh, being that being that I know Lassie, I feel like Lassie. Uh, he understands defense. I think he just has to be a little, probably a little more aggressive than he has been. Maybe Blixen wise, he has played on a championship team before, championship defense before his career with me. So I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that he that he took some of the stuff that we used to do. Um, that worked and simplified it and made sure that he implemented it in his defense. I would. I mean, it worked. Uh, but uh, I think it'll be an even match. Honestly, I think it'll be even. Uh, the Crocs don't have anything that they have to – they already know what they're going to get, I think, the Butchers do. So it makes it easier. You can focus. So um, I think it's a little even better. Moving on, let's – Flip the script. Let's go Butcher's offense versus Crocodile's defense. And, again, I think the major thing we're going to talk about here is, you know, the passing of the Butcher's versus the Crocodile's secondary and their pass coverage. And I'm just going to throw out a couple of names for the for the Butcher's receivers. You got Miko Seppinen, Christian Nautinen, Lucas Arella. That's the big three that everybody knows about. But then also you have Fun Fung Nguyen who comes in every once in a while. I don't know. Like I don't know if he just don't play in some games. <laughs> like, but he shows up every once in a while. And then you'll uh Mickey J has been seen playing a little bit of slot receiver later on in the season. And then uh number 17, Sami Nikonen has jumped in and out every once in a while as well. So they, they have a, a solid group of receivers and they prefer to pass the ball. That's kind of their bread and butter. While on the other side, you have the Crocodiles. You've got Eric Irvin at safety, Atu Tuoko at safety, Thomas Anisiatis at corner, Heike Toivola at corner. And then you kind of have Artu Topola, who plays linebacker, but he's more like a nickelback sometimes for them, the way that their defense is set up. He's an outside linebacker, kind of more like a nickelback. He actually plays DB on the national team, so – it's like that in between spot, and then we saw in the playoffs that, uh, and I think the last game of the season as well, number twenty Oxley Syrian, and is back from injury, and the Crocs are high on having him on the field, and he plays safety. So, what do y'all think about this matchup? Butchers receivers versus Crocs DBs. How you feeling about it? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a little. Half and half on this one. Uh, because I've seen the Butchers' uh, offense flow, and I've seen it on days where it was working nice passing-wise mm-hmm. um, more than run. I know a few games we've seen Mickey get a, you know get off, do his thing or whatever. Um, but here we are again with lopsided – statistical, you know, things, matchup-wise. The Butchers, um, they can't score. They can't score on everybody but the Crocs. <laughs> the most everybody points they've but the you know, team two games. In two games, they score, what, 27 points on the Crocs in two games? Yep. Well, they they scored six in the first Six one. points on the first day. But, I mean, but the, they lost, with the second. They scored 27 the second. points on this team. The second time they scored 20 something points, and there was a touchdown called like we all know that was a touchdown. Everybody knows that that was a touchdown, yeah. but there was no there was no ref there to call it. So they could have scored, you know, another touchdown in that game. And that was all in the second half because they were losing 21 0 in that game. So I, I they, forgot about that. I forgot about that touchdown that was it was. You just reminded me. Yeah. yeah. If if they get that touchdown at the end of the game, it's a tie ball game and either forcing overtime or something else can happen. But also they were down 21-0 and lost 28-21. So mm-hmm. they outscored the Crocs in the second half of that game. And they showed that they can, I mean, that that's showing that they can beat them. Obviously, it was because I was wearing the butcher's hat. And that's what really changed the uh, round for them in that game. They were uh, they were they had zero offensive points. 21, 21 on to zero. Hat. 21 to zero because like Brandon Gordon said, they start out slow. 
And like mm-hmm. I said, this right. is a championship game. You cannot start off slow in a championship game before you know it, you're going to be down. And regular season game, being down 21-0, uh, these guys tend to be a little more relaxed on defense. Second half, you kind of just like going through the motions a little bit. But in a championship game, the adrenaline rushing, that they're not stepping off the wheel if they go up 21 points because you're trying to beat the brakes off of them, like to, to show people that they're not supposed to be here. So once again, uh, the Butchers offense is capable of scoring points, but they just have a hard time doing it against the Crocs. That's all I'm saying. They have a hard time doing it against I the Crocs. I agree with you. I don't, I, I don't know I why it's like, but partially it's because of the Crocodiles defense. When they got a D-line, they got a rushing D-line. They, that's, that's exactly what their D-line is made for, rushing the passer. The Brandon Gwinner wants to throw the ball. Um, he hasn't have to had to run a lot um, because they've been so successful with him doing what he does. But this is a game where they give him problems. This defensive line gives him problems. So without being – I mean, they shut him out first half of both probably game, both games they played him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's and partially second of the first one. But um, I just think that the Butchers offense has, is going to have to be pretty much – perfect in this game like they're gonna have they're they're gonna need mickey to have an outstanding game i don't mean like the normal average because the butcher's not like up there in rushing averages like they're only averaging like 90 some yards rushing a game I, i think their their thing is more um yards per carry type of thing like Mickey will get like five or six carries and get 70 yards compared to most running backs who need like 12 or 15 carries to get 70 yards. So, yeah. like, he's yeah. very, and they don't very use him. good in a low, low usage amount. And, and I mean, I, I, get – oh, go ahead. No, nah, but I, <laughs> what I was saying is, like, no, you, you, you're you right. Like, they don't use – I don't think they use Mickey as, like, uh, he's our premier back type of thing. Mm-hmm. He is our starting running back, but he's not, like, a premier back. So, they don't go into games thinking that he has to touch the ball 15, 20 times a game. Or whatever they put him in certain situations. You want to go to the red zone, which they are in the top for red zone scoring. That's why the butchers, the butchers, if you can finish drives, you'll be in every game. You can find a way to be in every game. Um, if you can get turnovers, you'll find a way to be in every game. But I just think the Crocs defense at home is a pretty good defense. Like I'm I, I mean, away away they're okay too. But at home, it's like they the defensive line is on another level when they're at home. So I think um, the Butchers' offense is going to have to be somewhat perfect. Like they're going to they they can't turn the ball over, um, and if they do, let it be minimal. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like don't don't let it be where your guy was supposed to be there. And you threw it to him or whatever because I I, I think they can't hurt him in that that aspect. But Miko Seppinen, Christian Nottingham, like they're not they're not sorry receivers or by any means. So they're going to get theirs. Oh, uh, correction, the, correction. They're the best receivers in the Maple League. And we forgot to talk about this <laughs> last time, but you came out here talking about them <laughs> Roosters guys. Like, they were so no, no, tell me. No offense. It's not, no offense to the Roosters. Not, but I'm going to say it here now. Them Butchers boys, them the best thing smoking in the Maple League. I, I had to say it. I had to. I had to take I, I'm, I, I'll, let you, I'll, let you, I'll let you plug them in. If if they want to if they want to use the last game against the Roosters or if they want to use the day in the championship as a way to say that they're the best receiving core, I I said this two years ago that the Butchers had great young talent. I said this two years ago, like I knew they were gonna eventually be like this, um, which they are nice. Miko Stephanie, dedicated Butcher, you know what I mean? Like he he's working on building that organization. I understand that, but. Um, Best thing they just don't play it. They don't play it good against the crowds. I mean, it, it is what it is. I keep going uh, okay. back to that. They play. You Look. can play the Wolverines twice. You can play UNC twice. You gonna make you me do it? Okay, hold on. The Let Roosters on twice. Time. Hold on. <laughs> Let me talk Let here know. for you. Let me talk here for you. Look here. Look here, look here, look here. That that don't change the facts. Let me tell you something about these here. Where were they at? Where were they at in this first game? Where was those guys at in this first game? They played them. Where was they at in the first half of the second game? Where were they at? I'm I'm nowhere to be found. So, all right, I want y'all to go on a journey with me here. If you were to say have some one on one drills or have to see some one on one matchups between these butchers receivers versus these crocodiles defensive backs. 
I'll, I'll say this flat out. They win in every time. No problem. They're better than those defensive backs one-on-one. They're better. And I say that because that is putting them on their individual talent. This is a team sport. When they play the Crocodiles, they don't get those one-on-ones. Crocodiles don't do don't have to do a whole lot of man and everyone stick to your own, put eight in the box. Because they have a D-line, like you said, that can get pressure by themselves, which means their linebackers get to help in coverage. So those DBs for the Crocodiles rarely get put on an island. And then you'll notice, and you'll if you saw the last game when the Butchers played them, when those DBs do get put on the island, when Thomas Anacitas has to go against Lucas Erola toe for toe, Erola beats him every time. But I digress. That's why they got the best receivers. But their offensive line will not hold up against the Crocs defensive line, which means those receivers don't get to go one on one. They have to be, they have to get into soft coverage. They have to find holes and then hope that the quarterback is going to be able to find them as he's running like a chicken with his head cut off because those defensive <laughs> linemen are chasing him. So mm-hmm. again, butchers, wide receivers. Best thing smoking. I'm just saying. Look, they, I'm going to say this as a group. Gonna, best thing smoking. As, I'm going to. I'm going to say this. So, with what you just said, maybe we've just been bamboozled into thinking they're the. You're thinking they're the best because of who they play. No, I'm telling you. There's not one me. defense. There's not one defensive coordinator in this league who is saying we got to focus on him. We got to focus on him. Because there's three you're, of them. It's a package say, say, deal. It don't matter. It don't yes, matter. It, it you does say matter. Like, Every other they, team, you name no, one guy. They, we already I'm said there's no corners in the league. league. We I already said there's no corners in the Maple League. There's no yeah, I agree. I agree. anything close I, to the corner. Again, so, so, so they're the best in the Maple League. I didn't say they're the best receivers in the world. You're getting shut out in the both cross games doesn't mean anything to you. You trying you to say because they played the Wolverines. We all know football. Hold on. No, we all know football. If the quarterback can't throw you the ball, how are you going to show out? You can't show out if the quarterback can't get you that the ball. Ain't my, that ain't my if you're problem, double, but you if, say the best receiving core because they scored 60 points on the on No, that's the, not the why Wolverines I said the best receiving core. And, and I never said that. Who don't, who I, that's not, not why they're the best receiving core. They're the best receiving core because individual talent, they are the best. And you can watch the film and see those are the so best receivers in the league. How many of them start on the national team? Nico Seppi, the only whoa. one starting the national see, team. Now we digress. First of all, first of all, first of all, I, I give zero <laughs> Fs about the national team because that don't mean nothing. Everybody knows you ain't on the Roosters, receiver. you don't play on the national team. We can get into that. Even a, Every, even the everybody receiver. knows if you ain't on if you we ain't on the Roosters, you don't, you don't need to be on the national team. That's how it we goes. don't want to get into politics about national. We don't want to get into politics. <laughs> we don't want to get into politics. <laughs> But look, you know what? I'll take my hat off. We're gonna let it ride because we're getting out, we're, getting, we're getting crazy out here. <laughs> but look, you can you can feel that way. That's cool. You got a great argument about it. Great argument about it. I guess we'll see. I, I'm just going out the last two games of these two teams playing. I'm not going off of nothing else. I'm not going off of what you should have did. Did this this game that game? I'm going for two games that I've seen before. The two games that I've seen before. The, the, the Butchers' offense couldn't do anything against them I agree. in six quarters. I agree. In six quarters, they couldn't do nothing against them. So, looking at that, I'm feeling pretty good. If I'm yeah, the defense I, coordinator I, I for the agree. Crocs, I'm feeling pretty good. I, I agree 100%. Again, like I said, I don't think that they'll be able to have a good game because of the Crocs' defense as a whole. Individual talent is different, and that's not what wins football games. Individually, you can't win a football game unless you're uh, Travis Hunter from the Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, he's, he's, he's that guy. He, he's the only oh, he couldn't even. He, he can't do it without the quarterback. So, yeah. That's the only person he's I know. Got, need a quarterback. <laughs> he's even got the D on his jersey for dog. That's Deion Sanders. He puts C for captains and D for dogs. D for dogs. That's <laughs> crazy. But, but we'll getting back to this. some good receivers. <laughs> getting back to this whole maple bowl that we're supposed to be talking about uh next uh position group we, we're kind of going through the position groups um you alluded to them earlier the running back versus the, the linebacking group 
I feel like the butchers with, with Mickey J and Alexi Hervinen. I think something that's been maybe not talked about enough because we don't have the time is number 22, Alexi Hervinen. Hey, kid got speed, vision, and he's a great runner. And he's a great compliment to Mickey J that allows Mickey J to do more than just receive handoffs. Because when Mickey J goes to slot and Alexi comes in, you don't lose anything. And that's really helpful for this team that wants to spread their defense out. I think on the other side, I, if I had a Crocs hat, which I don't, I would put it on right now and say <laughs> the Crocodiles have the best <laughs> linebacking core in the Maple League. <laughs> no holes bar, bar none, fade all. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Um, Yohani Kobamaki, Sado Jalo, Yaska Vardanen, Artu Topola, those four guys as a group, there's there's not a better linebacker group. They give you everything you need on the from the linebacker position. As I said earlier, they cover, they get into coverage. You know, Yohani is a converted safety, so he understands where the ball should be, where routes are run, and he gets into those lanes. Yaska Vardanen could be a, a nickel backer if he wanted to be at times. And R2 Topola, I already mentioned him earlier, kind of as a defensive back. And then Saidu Jalo is the, you know, he's a run stopper. That's what he does. He see ball, get ball, gets in there, helps in the run game. As a, as a unit, they're unstoppable. But I do think that in this matchup, the Butchers actually have the advantage because I do feel that Mickey J and Alexi Hervinen are a little bit more versatile than the best linebacker group in the Maple League. So I kind of contradicted myself. I'm sorry, but y'all take it. <laughs> no, you, you, are you going to put the Butchers hat back on now? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, Look, Mickey J, Alexi Herman, best thing smoke. <laughs> I, I do think I do think that those two guys in this game, you said it earlier, Q, is that Mickey J isn't the feature back. But if he was, it would it would change things for what the butchers could do as an offense. Because as good as they are in that passing game, they're not gonna be able to get the ball downfield like they want to. A lot of their concepts, they're not gonna have time to run them. And Mickey J is that guy who can force the defense to slow down. If He's you make, in this game. Yeah, if you He's if you make that defensive game. line think, hold on, am I pass rushing or is it a run? I have to do both, or is this guy leaking out? Just slow them down enough that you can run your offense. It changes how how they're gonna play against them. And I think of the last two times they played against them, they haven't done that. They haven't really made Mickey J that guy. And matter of fact, if you remember the second half and that that second game, Mickey J came on late in that game. <laughs> he started mm -hmm. catching passes out the backfield and made a couple of plays. I think he scored in the red zone as well. And but it was a little, you know, too late, too sorry, and nothing you can do about it. Yeah. If they come yeah. out letting him be kind of the feature, what'll happen is that defense will have to focus on him, and that'll open up all those receivers that I named that are the best thing in Maple League. Yeah. yeah, I, I you, mean, you know, I, I was look. about to say something similar, in that if the butchers, <laughs> if <laughs> the butchers want any chance to win this game, they need to run the ball well, because, like you said, it's going to open up them receivers. If you run the, you start running the ball well, you get that edge on the defensive line. Suddenly, they've got to put an extra guy in the box. What that does, that opens up a zone. Okay, it gives maybe one-on-one -on -one coverage on the backside. It gives you something different. So for the Butchers to win this game, yeah, they've got to run the ball well. They have to. And they, they're going to have to feature feature both backs a little bit more. Maybe, maybe they might run a bit of two back. Or even with Brandon Gwinner, like we talked to him in the interview about him running. Like we've not really seen it much this season with his legs, but that boy can run. Yeah. So with him in, with him in the run game, with these two running backs, if they get success early running the ball, that's their opportunity to win the game. That that that's their key to victory. If they run the ball well early, I feel like the passing game will take care of itself. Mm. Well, like you, I think you both got good uh, stances on it. Um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking more of, of 
maybe Mickey helps more in, in the spread, maybe the empty. Um, where you could get him out one on one against some of these linebackers, some of these DBs, um, some swing routes. Because like like Purvis said, the defensive line is gonna be rushing. He's not gonna have that much time. So you're only out most of the time with the swing route. That's you know the dump off is, is you know maybe that, they do that screen play. I would say they have yeah, a really screens, good screen like, play. Like, for him. That's that's what hurt teams like. That that's what hurt aggressive teams, defensive mm-hmm. aggressive teams. But the thing that the Crocs have an advantage is. They don't have to blitz. So not having to blitz means that Mickey J can run the screens, he can run swings, but there's always a backer or two who's going with him. But the thing that will help the blitzers is that, like we said, Brandon Brennan can run. So you 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 have to decide, though, how much of a balanced offense you're going to be in this game and say, hey, we're going to come out this first half and we're going to try to open up this zone read and we're going to try to open up this RPO. Um if not, we, we, do you plan on just dropping him back and letting him throw the first half and then see how you doing and see – and then maybe try to get Mickey in there a second? I, I don't know, but I think Mickey is best for them is going down the stretch. When they're, like, trying to close games, he's a motor. He gets the ball. He gets gas. He gashes defenses at the third or fourth quarter. I think that's when he hurts people the most because he's he still has his energy. He, he hasn't had the ball 15 times already. So, um it, I think it, it can work for them um, if they use Mickey the right way in this game. It can definitely give them some disadvantages as far as matchup wise. Um, but they have to decide: Are we going to throw the ball fifty times, or are we going to go twenty and twenty, or twenty five and twenty five? Just you got to make a decision. If if you even get that many chances in this game, um, but I guess we'll see. Yeah. Let, let, let's talk about the, the real deal in this game: uh, the Butcher's O line versus the Crocodile's D line. Uh, again, mm. for the Butchers, you have uh, Jonathan Yasovada at center, uh, Vino Pakinen at left tackle, uh, Sakari Siltakorpi, who is probably going to be playing right tackle, and then they have Eustace Asovada at right guard, and then they kind of rotate at the left guard or right. Uh, one of the guards, they kind of have different people coming and going because they have some holes. I'll say it now. They got some holes. I think with the, the Butchers O line, you got you got two good end pieces when you move Sakati out to tackle. When he was playing guard and they had Eustace Asavada at tack, at tackle. And I say this with nothing but conviction conviction because I've been watching O line this year, like heavily. Because we had to do the all Finland thing and we were going to go two teams deep, which meant we really need to know who's good and who's not. Eustace Osovada is the weak link. Like that kid, he he was giving up everything early in the season. And that's why they moved Sakati from guard to tackle. Every time they played a, a good rush team, Sakati will go from guard and start playing tackle in that game. So in this game, he's going to be playing tackle instead of his natural position of guard. On the other side, Vino Pakinen, he's doing fine. He, he's going to do as good as you can get for a left tackle. He's one of the best in the league. Sorry he didn't make the all-fiddling team. He was close, but, you know, it is what it is. It, it, was, a, it was a league vote. <laughs> but outside of those two, the, the middle part of their line, that's going to be trouble. Because they're not strong in this middle. Those two guards can't handle by themselves. But if if Jonathan Osovada has to help one of them, the other one is going to get beat. And he can't help both of them against the rush that the Crocodiles are going to be able to go with, with Seth Zins, Philip Zakic, Elijah Watson, and now Diego Paz Gonzalez. They brought in another guy to – beef it up. I think checking got hurt or something like that. It's it's going to be a real long day for the Butchers O-line because they have to figure out ways to stop that pressure, which goes a little bit into what we were talking about with the running back. They might have to keep the running back in. They might have to keep him in to block. And that will only take away from what they can do with the running back. And now that I say that and I'm thinking about it, they have a tight end. The Butchers use um, Osco, I can't say his last name, starts with an M, number 83. He plays tight end for them. Mm. So they might actually have six O-linemen, basically, 
which takes out either a receiver or a running back from getting into routes. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts about this matchup? I mean, that's a load to handle with. When, you, when you're saying about your interior is your weakest point and you've got Seth Sins and, and Sakok in there, I mean, geez, like, and then you've got Watson and Gonzalez to compliment them. It's going to be a long ass day for the, that butcher's offensive line. And, and what's what's crazy about that, the Crocodiles D line, sorry to cut in there, is that those four guys, they can rotate. Like, they're not all like right? criteria or rush. Like, they can move, which means they will find the weakness. And when they find it, I mean, I don't know what you're going to do. I mean, the, the only thing that the Butchers offense can do is go quick game. Like, like you said earlier, getting the running back in a swing, throwing those slants, throwing a quick out, just getting quick game to, to make them adjust, do something to make them adjust. You know, you've seen teams sometimes where their defensive linemen are flying out because they're like, oh, there's a guy. Maybe try and run some jets to try and widen out the defensive linemen and run the counter off the jet something creative to get this defensive line moving without having to block them for more than a second. They need to do something along those lines because if they try and take them one for one heads up, I'm telling you now they're going to lose. It's as simple as that. This Crocs D line is too good to take one-on-one. They can't be solo blocking them. And there's four of them. Best in the Maple League. Yeah, I said it. One guy. I mean, it's no secret. Crocs D line, best in the Maple Maple League. They are. Hold on, I I do have a Crocs like uh cap though. It's an old one, guys. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> bucket, you got a I little bucket. Bucket. I can't fit it. It's too small. Like it doesn't fit my head. I I actually tried Wait, to wear it send on it my, my interviews. Way. Like send it, send it my way. <laughs> well, I guess it, it just it doesn't fit though. Like, it's all right. they don't fit the dreads, but it's all right. You can pull it off for you know a little interview or some championship party. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to wear this for while we talk Crocs D-line. Best thing in the Maple League right here. You can't name a better D-line than what the Crocs got, baby. Yeah, I said it. Purvis is just the ultimate hype man today. Yeah. What I'm doing, I'm I'm hedging my bets. I'm flipping. I'm on whatever. Whatever is hot. Not so fast. Not so fast, my friend. Not so fast, my friend. Not so fast. (laughs) What are your thoughts about it, uh, EQ? You guys hit some some good points, um, but um, like I said, with the Crocs having a, such a, a D line the way they do, I don't think they're they're necessarily built for stopping run, but they stop the run uh, with the help of their linebackers and the safeties. Um, they wouldn't be, you know, the number two rushing defense in the, in the, in the in the in the league if they weren't good at it, and they wouldn't be the number one scoring defense. Um, they're number one in a lot of defense categories for a reason, and that's because they make plays at every at, and I think of every level of their defense. Like you say, their linebackers get the help in the pass. Yuhani is is a is a great hybrid linebacker for that. He can play nickel. Um a lot of those guys on that on that squad, they can move around different places. Like we were saying, Eric is, is safety. He can just play safety. Um but he he can play nickel. He'll be moving around a lot. But I think what's more important in this matchup, this, this O line versus D line matchup is Winner in his legs. I mean, he's going to get rushed heavily. So what he decides to do when he starts to be on the move is going to be important. Is he going to put it on himself or is he going to rely on those um, top receivers that you said? So I think that's that's more so of what's going to be important because we know the Crocs D-line is better um, than, the, than the Butchers O-line. I mean, anybody that watches film or watch the game can tell you that. Um, the butchers are in the championship, but that doesn't mean their O line is the greatest. Like, mm-hmm. and that doesn't mean that you know what I mean. Like they just out here not giving up anything. But um, it's gonna it's gonna be very important. The butchers O line can't they just can't let the crops get to a point where they're getting back there to the point where Brandon can't even he can't even get three seconds to throw the ball. Like you don't want that type of game. And like I said, the worst thing you could do is have a championship game also in your home field. Because you, t- you, it's like it's like the atmosphere is, is made for you. It's, it's it, you, you play faster, you play stronger, and um, the crowd got that advantage along with that too. But 
having an aggressive D-line can also help you. And that's why the butchers can can adjust and run screens and zones and draws and and uh, it'll help. Oh, yeah, that, I think you said that perfectly. They they have to do something to make up for the fact that they're under they're under underwhelming compared to the Crocs D line. I don't know what I'm looking for. But anyways, let's talk about the coaching. Um you got the Butchers offense coordinator versus the Crocodiles defense coordinator. Butchers offense coordinator Christian Lynn versus Crocodiles defense coordinator Charlie Ove. Uh, we don't really get into them personally. We just kind of go over what we see play calling wise. Uh, in in my humble opinion, I think this would be a wash. I don't think that it, either one is going to have to do well. I think the Butchers offense coordinator is is going to have to be creative to be successful. Mm-hmm. And he's going to have to do some things that they haven't done before. While on the Crocodile side, I think their their talent is really what's going to make them work well. Is that they 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 have more talent in more of the positions. You know their defense is kind of set up to beat the Butchers offense. The way it's set up, you got a really good O line, a really good D line that can get you pressure at any time, so that you can cover all these damn receivers. Like you don't have to send your linebackers; they can get in the way and make it hard to throw to the receivers. Because receivers now have to navigate between linebackers and DBs. You basically can have seven guys in coverage against three receivers. And that's just that's hard. Like it doesn't matter how good the receivers are, it's hard to get open if there's seven on three. And that's basically what the crocodiles will be working with. I think their DC for him is just don't overthink it. If they do get a big play, don't change things up and get all crazy, like, oh no, we got to do this. I mean, it's football. Some sometimes it's gonna happen, but if you stay consistent, like the Crocs have been all season, they don't really have to do a lot play wise in this one from the defensive side. What do you guys think? I I think um, like you said, the Butchers got a more of a a task ahead. Their coach has a more of a task trying to figure out the holes and the advantages he can get and take um, because the Crocs don't give you many chances. Um, to, to find those weaknesses like that, <clears throat> um, the D-line doesn't allow it. So even if you don't have good safeties or good corners, you'll never be able to expose them because that D-line is so dominant and, and so active that we'll, we and, – and we do get to see it because we do get – we do have seen the Crocs DBs get beat. We have seen that. Um, and it's usually when the other team has more time for the play to develop. But – or the quarterback is on the run, then, then yeah, now you have an equal equal chance for your receivers winning these battles because now the Crocs have to play more of a man to man type of situation. But for, for but mostly um as a whole, the Crocs D line is so dominant that most DBs don't have to cover that long. They don't have to 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 run a lot. So they're healthy, they're fresh, you know what I mean? Three and out, like they're used to that. So um the butcher OC is just gonna have to find a way to prolong his drives and, and try to find ways to 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 hit him in that hole because Nico Seppin will be very important in this too. I know we talk about the coaches, but Nico Seppin will be is very important in this game because he will start the game off with a linebacker probably inside of him and a safety over the top, probably Eric over the top of him. So it's gonna be very important to see what his OC do when he 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 figures out who the the crocs are gonna focus on taking out of the game. And I think the smartest thing to do would be start with Miko first um, um, to not let him get going because he's going to hurt you the most. Oh, I know what he's going to do. He's going to do that little out route that you do from yeah. slot. He's going to run that little out route. You can't route. guard it. You, you, you can't, can't guard, guard it. Unless you the safety two. can't help because he's going out and then the inside leverage yeah. and he gets out of it so quick. That's the quick game right the, there. The, the, the Crocs defense is coordinated now on this side. To get his hat off, put my butcher's hat back on. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Crocs defense coordinator has to be uh, creative too, because um, I know when when you're when you're coaching defenses, some, sometimes you're running cover four, five plays in a row, and then the next play you run cover two. But that's how you that's how you mess up other offenses. That's how you mess up other teams' plans because now that out route has been hurting us when I was in cover three. 
But now I switch to cover two one time and my corner's there to lay this hit or get a pick. And now I got you readjusting what you want to do and running this play again. So I think the Crocs DC has a task on his hand too. Um, it's just a little easier when you got a D line like that where you don't, your risk, you know what I mean? It's not that yeah. high. It's like, yeah, I know they're risk. going, yeah, you don't really have to take risk that much. Like your safeties will be able to help on these deep balls all the time because they're going to be one step drops, one step throw. That's all he pretty much gonna get, and now your safeties can 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 be out wide and help you out on deep routes. But um, it'll be interesting to see what the Butcher's OC do, um, and what he decides to do if he want to keep it balanced or keep it run heavy or pass heavy. Um, but he got a pass either way. They both do. Do you have anything, Chris? Uh, the only thing I want to add is that because of the talent of this front seven of the Crocodiles. You don't really need to be creative with your play calling because they're going to get theirs. Yeah. And as a, as a DC, when you've got players like that, there isn't a lot that you need to do. But one thing that really did interest me, I was just looking back at the stats. In the two games that these two teams have meet, met, there's only been the Crocodiles have only sacked Brandon Gwinner once. Oh, he not he, that's, he not going to take no sacks. And uh, so that's why I looked at tackle for loss as well. Four in each game. So eight eight TFLs over two games, which is which is interesting. Um, so I, I it's, it's, it's going to... Mickey? Like that, I mean, because they ain't tackling Brandon. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That, I mean, but that's, that's what, that's what like, it is. Look, that's what he's saying. Like, that. But, yeah, but pressure is pressure, though. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Pressure means more. Pressure yeah. means more. It's an overall exactly. effect more than sacks do. So, yeah. sacks is for them quarterbacks who don't know how to get rid of it or get out the pocket. Brandon Grinner, he he'll move. That's for sure. He yeah. definitely gonna move. Yeah, he's a big dude, um, nice size dude. So that that reminds me. I know we only got a couple minutes, but uh, last thing I wanted to say was, you know, we don't really get to say like who the quarterback goes against because he goes against the whole offense, but. Uh, these two quarterbacks, you got Zach Whitehead for the Crocs and Brandon Gwinner for the Butchers. What are your thoughts on, like, which one of them is going to have a little bit of a better game in this matchup uh, really quickly? <laughs> Man, I, 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 real quick, I think I think uh, Zach Whitehead, uh, we haven't really praised him that much this year because of the team that he has, but he has done a great job. Um, Brandon Gwinner, balling, a lot of stuff you expect out of him. Um, the thing is, I don't think a lot of people seen what Zach Whitehead can really do fully. Yeah. Um, well, he's starting to show him running more now, but um, out of the two, as far as having a better game, I think stat wise, Brandon Winter might end up having better stats than him. Um, but I think control wise and, and, and going through the game, I think Zach Whitehead will be better at that because he has a more balanced offense to like say, like, I'm not, I don't have to make every play. Brandon Gwinner touches the ball every play and pretty much is in control of how that offense goes. Um, Zach Whitehead, that's not his mission. His mission is just facilitate, make the throws that he needs to make and, and score the points they need to score and let Powell do the rest pretty much. So it's a little easier task in his hand. Um, but I expect a, a good game from both of them. What about you, Chris? I, I, think there's, I think there's a lot more pressure, uh, similar to what Q said, there's a lot more pressure on Gwinner because – he has to show out, whereas Zach Whitehead's just got to do the basics. He's just got to do the basics, right? If he can do what he's done all season, be Mr. Consistent, I I think he's only thrown four picks on the year, Zach Whitehead, mm -hmm. and 24 touchdowns, Ooh. which is efficient as hell, man. Four, four picks in 12 games. That's some stat, that is. So he's just looked after the ball. If he does that, if he looks after the ball, doesn't try to force anything, hand a rock to CP, he'll be fine. Whereas Brandon's got more pressure on him because he's got to be the playmaker. He's got to be the guy back there running around. This defensive line are going to be chasing him because they're going to get to the backfield. Like He's he's going to have to move and he's going to have to find his receivers on the move. Yes, he has the best receiving core in the league. So if he can get mobile and put the game on his back, they're going to have a chance of winning it. Definitely. So I, I do think quarterback play is important, more important for the Butchers than it is the Crocodiles. So we went over offense and defense for both teams going against each other, but obviously there's a third phase to football. So let's talk about the special teams. 
And we won't really get into like personnel like we did with the other positions, but just kind of run through what special teams and who we think has the advantage in this game or disadvantage if we want to go that route. So we'll start off with kickoff teams. Is does either team have an advantage on one when it comes to kicking the ball off? <laughs> um, I think they've got. No, go on, Q. You got it. Uh, I think maybe the Crocs got an advantage in this better kicker. Um, but I, I don't, I, I don't really. <laughs> yeah, it's a. We'll we'll call it know, a push. It, I don't think this. Yeah, it's a push right here. This this is something that I think. Uh, it's a it push, can make a difference, but, but they haven't well, shown that it makes it's a difference. It's field position. <laughs> it's one of those field position yeah. things. It's a push because I don't think either team is, like, overly focusing on it. But yeah. I will say from just the experience of knowing the players who are, who are playing, Yane Sarkula can kick it out the back of the end zone. Mm-hmm. He can. I don't know if he will do it or even if he's going to be doing the kickoffs, but – Making the butchers drive the whole field is always a good idea, because that that forces their offense to be more efficient. Which that's been the issue they have is being efficient consistently. So going down the list, kickoff return team. Now this one, I think, if I was to say something, I would say mm-hmm. the, the butchers have a little bit of an advantage. I think they have a few guys who can score mm-hmm. as returners. Lucas Arella, Brandon Wellington, and even Zach Wright, if he gets in there, if they get a kickoff return, there's been a couple times. I think Arella – did Arella score a kickoff return this year? You I don't think you good kickoff returns. He had like a few. Had a few he had some big ones. He's definitely had he, some big ones. I think he scored a, a, a kickoff return on a national team game or something, and that's what I'm thinking. But he has that type oh, of yeah, speed. Yeah, that don't count. You're right. My bad. But he has that type of speed that he could score or yeah. something like that. And really underrated is Brandon Wellington is because he's kind of new. We don't know him that well, but every time he touches the ball, it's crazy. He almost going. He almost scoring a lot. <laughs> yeah. He's like close to scoring to some of these plays that he that he does. Like even the run plays, he's like almost scoring on. Every time he touches the ball, he could score. So the next thing would be uh, punt teams. Who has the better punter? I mean, I'm Butchers, Butchers, right? We already like, know this. That's not even a great. That's not even a great statistic, though. I mean, we're just going down the list. I mean, obviously <laughs> the Butchers have the best punt, but I mean, do you really want to have the best punter in this game? <laughs> I know. <laughs> you don't want to be punting the ball in this game. <laughs> you don't want to be punting. And you, if if your be, if your best receiver is your punter, I mean, he's like one of my jobs. I'm doing well, I guess. <laughs> so, because I mean, if you're not catching, then you're kicking. <laughs> so you don't want to. If you don't want to catch the ball, you're gonna punt the ball. Uh, the the next one would be punt return. Again, uh, I think you're butchers. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, like you yeah. like you said, it's just because of that return. Like Zach Wright, you get the ball in his hands, he looks electric. Brandon Wellington, you yeah. get the ball in his hands, he looks electric. Aaron, yeah, yeah. boy can run. Similar similar kind of argument to the kick return stuff. Yeah. yeah. So then go to field goals. I think we're going Crocs with Crocs. this one. Crocs. Crocs. Yeah, Crocs. <laughs> do, do the push <laughs> wall. And, 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 if it, if it comes down to it, well, right? <laughs> if it comes down to it, I'm like the Crocs will probably win the game off of that. If it comes down to it, because not saying Miko Miko has a range, he has a range, but this kicker, the Crocs kicker, can kick some field goals, man. Like I'm talking about clutch field goals. So he get he can kick a 45 yarder, which is basically yeah, a professional, yeah. which field is goal clutch in Finland. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's not. Clutch in Finland. The only places where 45 yarders are given is the NFL. Everywhere yeah, else, yeah. if you kick over 40, you're a scholarship athlete playing we'll kicker. You. Yeah, we'll take you. Like, that's, yeah, like, that's right. just how it is. <laughs> and the Crocs have that in their backyard. And one thing, just to go on this a little bit more about the field goals, is they're probably the only team that is good enough to get the ball right to that range. Because we said, like, Miko Seven has range, but look at the games that the Butchers have played. Look at the games a lot of teams have played. Rarely do you see a team get 
to that 40 yard field goal where they have to decide punt or go for it. Most teams don't get there. They, they get stopped before they can get to that little range or they get into the red zone where it's like, you have to go for it. While the crocodiles, once they get to the 40 yard line, they're like, shoot, let's just, you know, get five more yards and we we can kick it. Mm -hmm. And then you start thinking, you know, in that type of mindset, instead of, okay, it's third and it's third and long. We have to get the first down. No, we, we just have to get three or four more yards, get him in range. And that's going to change how they go about a lot of things in this game, knowing that you can do that with that kicker. And and I don't know if we named him, but we should name him. <laughs> uh, Ed to Makamanis, a young kid from mm-hmm. Sinioki. Last thing on here is mm-hmm. field goal block. Do we think either one of these teams are going to block a field goal? Crocs. Crocs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crocs. Yeah. Yeah. They had a lot of them early. They yeah, early in the season. They got speed off the oh, edge too. as well, D line. Yeah. This could change I the think... game to make the game break or make make it make or break the game early too. If this happens, um, if they pull off one of these field goal block or extra point block, anything, all that stuff is gonna make a make a yeah, difference in these games. So we've seen Eric Kerbin do it, but he's done it this yeah. year. I, yeah. and I honestly think the butchers have only tried like one field goal this season. <laughs> I don't think they're going to even try to kick a field goal. Like, I don't think it's in their blood. But, okay, so just to sum up special teams, we said kickoff teams, push. Kickoff return, push. butchers. Return, we went butchers. Kickoff return. Yep. Butchers. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Kickoff return, butchers. Punt, butchers. Punt return, butchers. And then field goal, crocs. And... Field goal block Crocs. So we got a one push, three butchers, two Crocs. So are we thinking butchers have the better special Very even. Yeah, 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 it's still a push, right? Yeah. It's it's still I think, a push. I think, I think the butchers, the butchers I mean, can for, return, they, and the Crocs. Yeah, can they kick. got more chances. They they got more chances to. I think they get more chances punt return kick return, you probably get more chances of that than you do um, field goal and field goal block. Field goals and stuff. Yeah. yeah so true. Um, I think the butchers is, is probably a little more leading in that in that special team category. They can they can affect the game more. Yeah, because they're gonna I well, mean that, you're gar- you're guaranteed at least one kickoff return for sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah. They've they've got more of that I guess game breaking ab- uh, ability in the special yeah. teams game. Yeah. Which is which is what you want, you know. It's a momentum changer. You get a score on special teams. Like how much does that get the sideline G'd up? Like it's just it's a momentum changer. Mm-hmm. That's really sure. important. So now we're at the you know the last picks of the season. <laughs> That's the part we're at <laughs> right now. And I, I did the tally anyways. So we're gonna uh See where the rankings are at. Basically, everybody went one and one. Everybody went one yeah. and one. So in first place, Spencer is 35 and 9. Coach Q is 34 and 10. So basically, y'all need to pick different teams for this. So we're not gonna tell him know. what team you pick before we get his pick. <laughs> Can't tell him what team yeah. you pick. We and already know who Spencer picking. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I think we, he should pick. Uh, Chris Green is in third, 33 and, and 11. Finland Swami is in fourth, 31 and 10. Perfect, I'm in fifth, 30 and 14. Coach Mike in sixth, 30 and 11. Seventh, Alex Malchoy, 29 and 12. Eighth is Jabari Harris, 25 and 13. Nine is Andy B, 24 and 12. And 10th place is Jamal Clay, 23 and 15. Got hey, a lot of people shout picking. out to Jamal, though. Hey, he, hey, he, hey, he went. <laughs> hey, he, he got one week right. He got one week right. <laughs> it, it was all or nothing. Right? He was right. like, somebody gonna make me right. You gotta appreciate. He was always he, picking the opposite. Like, yeah, he, he's a real friend. I say that because he just be picking his like. All right, I'm gonna go with them because everybody else picking them. Like, nah, yeah. bro. If you if you don't know. Last week, pretty much everyone picked Crocs and uh, Roosters Rooster. to win. Yeah. And Jamal Clay picked 
the Royals, the Royals, Royals the Crocs, and the, and the Butchers. He was the only one. The Roosters. <laughs> he was and he the was only like, one that didn't pick the Royals and yeah, Crocs. Yeah, he's the only one. The Roosters and Crocs. <laughs> so he and he and by doing that, he still ended up going one and one like everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. crazy. It, it did crazy. almost nothing. Great, the, nothing changed in the, in the standings, but it was funny. So, I mean, obviously picking the winners is. I mean, there's not a lot of art or science to this, and again, we don't consider ourselves experts. We consider ourselves enthusiasts. But it's championship game. Uh then we're gonna we're gonna take this time before we actually do our picks and kind of give any final thoughts about like how you feel this game is gonna go or what are you excited to see, you know? What whatever you want to get on your mind about this game, this will be the last chance to do it before the game. Mm. <laughs> do you I'll, do you I'll want me to first. go first so y'all can think while no, I'm I'll talking? Go I, okay. I'll go first. I'm gonna go do that. Um Starting off with, I'm I'm gonna start off with my pick first. Okay, I'm I'm going with the Crocs. I'm going with the Crocs. Nothing against the Butchers. I want my boy Lassie to get him a championship. I do because he supported me when I was doing my thing. I do want Lassie to get a championship also, but I'm looking at, I'm looking at it from, uh, uh a standpoint of, actually them. I'm looking at it from a standpoint of them actually, doing, what they have to do to win this game. And I just don't think the Butchers, when we get to the fourth quarter, is going to have enough to stop the Crocs. Like, like if it comes down to the Crocs having the ball to score, I don't think the Butchers would be able to stop them. Um, it might not come down to that, but I just think Christian Powell and that group, um, they ha- have been on a mission all season. And I haven't seen – where they just digressed as a team to the point of like, where I feel like they're in trouble in this game. I don't think they're going to be in trouble in this game. I do think they're going to get scored on. Um, I do think they're going to make some mistakes, but I think they're going to make less mistakes than the, than the butchers are. And I think um, the butchers great season for getting here um, with a little bit of help, not taking away from what they've done, but they did have a little bit of help getting there. Um, but I just think the Crocs is a better team. I think the Crocs have been more consistent. Um, I think Christian Powell in this situation and in this game is always pr- – not this game, but in these situations, he's proven to be exactly what uh, we know him to be. And I just think a heavy load of him um, is just going to be too much for the Butchers' defense. And for a defense that's not built to stop the run, but you're going to play against it, I think you're you playing behind the eight ball already. And I just think he's the last person that I would want this defense to see for a championship. Not saying that they can't play with them. I do believe they can play with them. I don't th- I don't see them uh I just don't see them not the way they've been starting off games. I just don't see that the butchers are coming in this game and take control. Um I know we're not doing scores. But I think I think Crocs win by two touchdowns. Ooh. Oof. Y'all want to do scores? We could do scores. Throw out a score. Hey, 34 21. 34 21. I gotta write that down because you know they're gonna hold us to that. 34 21 Crocs. What about you, Chris? What are your thoughts on this game? I'm I'm gonna say a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to say, Butchers, if you're listening, run the ball early. Run Mm. the jet sweep. Run the jet counter. Let Brandon run. Roll him out of the pocket. Let him find his receivers. Get him away from the defensive line. Crocs, if you're you're listening, (laughs) empower we trust. (laughs) (laughs) As simple as that. Get a ball to CP15. Go in the game, man. That that boy's been grinding in Senayoki for a minute. Like, if anyone deserves a championship more, it's, it's him. Like, he's stickability, staying with that, staying with that side for a long time. Like, what six, seven years now? Yeah, he's loyal, bro. <laughs> he deserves it. He deserves it. And he, and it, there ain't many people that work harder than him. And yeah, are we? Am I doing my pick now or? 
Yeah, you I might as well. You already did I mean, it. You already yeah, did it. I mean, so, I mean yeah. I guess you got to do, do it I, and do the score is really what we're going do for Do I go now. with my head or do I go with my heart? Your heart? Because Where is your heart? What? <laughs> Whoa! Wait, <laughs> you said my head or my heart? Which I'm trying, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out what because the difference. Every part yeah, of me, me too. Every part of me in the semifinal, every part of me was telling me, "Pick the butchers, pick the butchers, pick." And I just couldn't bring myself. And I don't know what it is. I've just got a feeling that the butchers might do it, but I, you, I can't need, bring myself. You need to a pick hat. You need the hat. I can't bring myself to pick the damn Dallas hey. Cowboys. I just can't. Um, so imagine, last imagine, imagine a team. That, imagine them announcing early the championship game is going to be played at your home field, and then you end up at your home field for the championship game. In a, a betting man would tell you, Chris, no matter what, go with them. <laughs> <laughs> Tampa Bay, with them. Tampa Bay Bucks, L.A. Rams, yes. Quote yes. Steelers. Yeah, yes. you cannot hey, like don't, Hel- don't Helsinki get me wrong. roosters like, for like eight years. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> like I said, every bit of me really wants to pick the butchers, but I just can't. Like it's part of me telling me I, they've got a chance, well, but I so what's the score? The so the score is what's so, gonna let us know how you really okay, feel. So I, I'm I'm gonna say the crocs are gonna win. Okay. And I think the crocs are gonna win. I'm gonna go a bit higher than Q. I'm gonna say Oh. 40, 42 to 14. 42. Whoa. That's they're what gonna, I'm going to say. They're going to hate you, Chris. <laughs> hey. Gonna, take that pain of the bitch away with. from me because, whoa. <laughs> I wouldn't even try them like that, though. I wouldn't I even lie. try them like that. Bro. I would. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to lie. Y'all make me want to pick the butchers. Just, just out of spite, <laughs> but I, I, but I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling that kind of risky today. I'm obviously going with the Crocs. I do wish I had a better hat, and I'll be in Sinioki. So if anybody knows where they make hats in Sinioki or something, hook me up. I mean, I, I'll be there like on Friday, so we have time to like make a hat or something, guys. Let's make this happen. Um, I, I just think that the Crocodiles are a better team. It's, it's one of those things where. I mean, it's not my heart, like what Chris has going on. I'm not that emotionally involved, <laughs> but you you do kind of like the story that the Butchers have, and you know we've joked around about them being the Dallas Cowboys, but they really have lived up to that. Like they've been a really good team with some glaring inconsistencies throughout the season, and that's what makes us say, you know, it is a weird comparison. They're not the Philadelphia Eagles. So, you know, that's how this game looks. Like, you have one team that there are no questions about the Crocodiles. There's not there's not anything about them that we're like, oh, man, that could be an issue in this game. No, we don't we don't see that. For the, for the Butchers, we're like, they have to do this. They're going to have to do that. They're going to have to play the best game of their lives to get the win, which that's true. If they play their very best game, they can win this game. But I would be stupid to think that that's going to happen. Like, that's not a a very good odds maker guess for me. So I'm not going to assume that's going to happen. But what I am going to (laughs) do is I'm not going to disrespect these boys like y'all have and say they're going to get beat by two or what is it, four touchdowns, Chris? Your heart is with the team that you think is going to get (laughs) mollywopped? That makes a lot of sense. He's like, I believe I want to pick you guys, but y'all are gonna get killed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what you just said. Me personally, I think I think that um, this game is gonna be true to form of most Maple Bowl games, where it's not close, but there's not a lot of scoring because one of those games where neither team really just runs up the score, and so. If I'm going to put up a score, I'm going to say 24 to 14. That's what I'm going to go, which is mm-hmm. under the average. I think that at some point, the Crocs are going to kick a field goal and get up by mm-hmm. a weird number. 
I I I could see it being like twenty one to seven at half, and then both teams just kind of like having a struggle and settling in in the second half, and both teams score or maybe the Crocs get a field goal in the second half and then they're they're winning so they kind of like just do enough and play that that field position game with punts and stuff while the Butchers once they get behind I mean that's a wrap once they get behind they're going to press and once they start pressing the Crocs defense is going to be able to do whatever they want and it'll just be one of those like how long is this game going to last but it's still – I mean, that, I think that's how it'll be. It, I think it's going to be a very exciting first half. But I think after that first half, we're going to kind of know who's going to win the game. I, I don't see – unless the Butchers come out and just get ahead in the first half, that will be a whole other thing. But I don't know if that's going to happen. But I, I do feel wow. like it'll be a really good first half, and then by that time I'll know who's going to win and probably start having some long drinks. <laughs> Love Carol. Love, hey, look, one, one, one thing I didn't say first, I wanted to say one thing I didn't say. Um, like Chris said, they've been grinding over there in Crockland, man. Um, yeah. and in football, you do have Cinderella's stories where a team out of nowhere that you know that wasn't Corpio, it wasn't the Roosters that that end up in the championship game. Um, and rarely they do win. Sometimes, sometimes. I mean, in history, you can you can probably look up some teams that it doesn't happen to. But I think in football, a team like the Crocs who've been grinding years and years and years, and then they finally get there, it's like it would be a crushing second time of them. Yeah, they were there last year. The you know what I'm saying? It'd be like crushing, like like what like a we curse type of thing. So. I think they have a different mindset now in this game. Like we've been here, um, we know what we didn't do to 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 get to our goal last year, but now we're back, and that's hard to do. It's hard to go back to back in any level of football. But I don't know, man. I just, I just I just I can't go against Christian Powell. Not this year. Well, I just can't. you make a I good point. You you make a really good point. We said like that because you're you're looking at the two teams, and I mean. I don't know who, but nobody had the butchers going to the Maple Bowl. Like, mm-hmm. that's not something Hell that no. we saw. So them making it is kind of the accomplishment. It's the, similar it's the to peak. what happened. Yeah, it's the peak. Yeah. It's, Which yeah. is similar to what the Crocs did last year. And you see how that worked out for them is they played against a team that were like, we're trying to get a three P. We hear about this business. And that and that's what happened to them last year. So when you look at it this yeah. year, I mean, as I think, again, we're not trying to downplay how hard or how important it is to the butchers. And, I mean, for that organization, for that city, having finally getting back to the Maple Bowl. I mean, we've been calling you Dallas Cowboys because you haven't been close to the Maple Bowl. We've been saying making the playoffs doesn't doesn't matter. You have to get to the Maple Bowl. But now you're at that point where you got to win it. And I say this with the utmost respect. If you don't win it, that confirms the Dallas Cowboys because <laughs> nobody cares about coming in second. Like it, it is what it is, but it's also one of those things like, obviously if you're part of that team or a part of that organization, you're playing with house money this weekend. Just getting yeah. there really is an accomplishment and you have to feel like, Oh my gosh, we're back. Like, just making it to the Maple Bowl means you're a contender for the next two to three years. Like, that's how you should feel. And that's accurate. But again, Crocodile's on a mission. It's at their house. They're in their home home city. They are the perennial favorites to win this game. And they haven't won since 2001. And they've been to a lot since then. Like, it's not like this is their first rodeo and they're just happy to be there. No. I know it's it's taken Christian Powell five years, but before he got there, they were going every other year, yeah. and weren't getting yeah, any I mean, dubs. Well, you can ask Spencer. Last, you can ask our friend Spencer year, Cullen about all them silver medals. Yeah, in the last eight years, they've been to like what four or five bowls, yeah. something like that. Yeah, about half of them. I mean, like the uh, what is it the 
Buffalo Bills of the Maple League. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty oh, much oh, what they do. Always a bridesmaid, the never a bride. The Buffalo Bills. <laughs> The no, the Buffalo Bills. We, we can't. Buffalo Bills versus Dallas Cowboys. No, I, we, can't, I, I, I we can't call them that because of the Buffalo Bills today are a totally different type of team. Actually, yeah, you're yeah. right. But the Buffalo Bills today, they couldn't. They can't get to the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but but it's, only it's, but you're right that. though. It's it's a um it's a it's a historic thing. It's it's a history thing. Like you have to go on history too, even though yeah. I think the butchers, like you said, the butchers peaked. Um, some teams. Their championship game is the playoff game. They exert so much out of that game that mm -hmm. you come into the championship game expecting things to go the way that they've been going. Or you're expecting things because sometimes you go in games and nobody makes big plays. Nobody. Yep. And you're like, man, what was wrong with us? Nothing. Yeah. It's just the other, it's just this is this is this is football. This is what happens. Like you would like for Zach Wright to to get pick sixes in a championship game and make it a great story. And, but it's a chance that it might not happen. It's a chance he might just have eight tackles, a tackle for a loss, and that's it. And you think, and you think, oh man, he ain't really do nothing. But it ain't that. It's just you play the game how it's given to you. But you also have to respect the fact that the work that somebody's put in on both sides. Like, all right, you got to wait your turn, which is that's how the crops feel. Y'all got to wait y'all turn. Like we I, we've been we've been here. <laughs> we've been it, we've been chomping at it for a minute. Like, unless if it helps turn, anybody, wait. If it helps anybody, I'm an L.A. Rams fan, and if y'all know how we did when we played against Tampa Bay, we were one of the best offenses, like, in the league, had that, like, 80-point game against the Kansas City Chiefs during the season, got to the Super Bowl through some, you know, was it the shenanigans? Was it that year against New Orleans? Was it the shenanigans that yeah. year? Yeah, the shenanigans. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, but we got the opportunity, couldn't score a point. Lost ten to zero in the Super Bowl, and it took two more years before we got back and we won it all. I say we because you know I'm part of the team too, and now we we're not good again. But I could always say you know 2021 baby champions. So that I mean that that has nothing to do with anything. But I'm just saying that for the butchers, it's a great accomplishment to be in the game, but for both teams you already have done enough that you have the respect of everyone that is supporting you or rooting against you that you deserve to be there. And that's something that you can hang your hat on no matter what happens in this game. And it's really good to see that the two best teams made it and whoever loses. Um, well, you know, there's, a, I mean, I guess there's next year for some people, but whoever wins, Make sure I have your hat on. I'll be supporting you guys. Uh, I'm also, I'm willing to do, you know, a halftime change, like if I need to change hats. Because I only have the butcher's hat, which means I'm probably going to wear it from the beginning of the game. So, Crocodiles, if y'all know anything Whoa. about me wearing the butcher's hats, they're 21 to 7 with me wearing their hat against the Crocodiles. <laughs> they're, not gonna, they're not even going to let you wear their hat on the croc side. <laughs> I, I walk out there, they're going to like, hey, you know, take that off, buddy. We'll take you off Chris, back, Chris. I, I don't know, Chris. I don't know if you know, but there's there's like you know it's a it's a myth about the Crocs at home, man. Like in in those games, like like you're playing against the Crocs and somebody else. <laughs> you <have laughs> you to. playing against the Crocs and somebody else. Like it's it's just gonna go that way. And mm. hey, we'll see what happens though. We'll see what happens. Yeah. But definitely, both teams made it. You guys, hey, that was enough, man. That's it for this episode of American Football in Finland. Hope it was worth the listen and the watch. Uh, guys, any last words before we get out of here? Anything you want to say to anybody? This is this is it for us. <laughs> we uh, here. Championship yeah. week. Two best teams in the Maple League. It's a different final to last year. I can't wait. Should be good. Yeah, good luck. Good luck to both teams. Um, I'm gonna shout out my boy Lassie again. Lassie, defense coordinator for the Butchers. Uh, also, Grave Digger Yari Morning, and he he used to play for the O line for the um for the Butchers too. He was my, my teammate at a point with the 69ers. So um, it's good to see him um, and other guys get to this point um, as coaches. Um, 
So I just want to congratulate them on getting to the Maple Bowl. Um, but that's that's about all the love they're gonna get from me for as a pick, though. But <laughs> uh, I just want to see a good. I honestly want to see a good game. You know what I'm saying? I, I I'm I support all the teams, but um, if if the butchers somehow pull it off. You know, congrats to them. If the Crocs win as expected, I think, for most people, then definitely congrats to them because they, they worked hard for it. They've been grinding for it, and um, we'll see what happens, though. But y'all gave them 14 points, though. I would be offended. <laughs> I would be offended 14 points. I, I gave them 14 <laughs> points and only gave the other team 24, though. Like I gave them 14 good points. Chris gave them. Ooh. We pretty much got the same score. We pretty much got the same score, though, Curtis. Me and you do. No, you got them. It's fine. You got them. You got them losing by two scores, but two like touchdown scores. No, 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 I don't. You got no, thirty-four yeah. to twenty-one. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm uh, you got two touchdown scores. I, I got to say one score and twenty-seven. Twenty-four is what I was gonna say. Thirty-four, twenty-four is what I was gonna say. But because I knew there's a got, field goal, so I, yeah, I got them with a field goal. But I don't think that I feel like it'll get so far, like ahead that they just don't get enough points. I don't know. But yeah, uh my my last words would be good luck to everybody. Um I will be out there for the first time in like two years. I haven't been to the last few Maple Bowls because I already knew who was gonna win before it happened. Go Steelers. Um <laughs> but this game I don't I really don't feel confident as I would like to be that you know the Crocs are gonna just run away with it. So it's worth me seeing up close and personal. So I'll be in Sinayoki. If you see me at the game, say hi, you know. Uh, and good luck to everybody out there, man. It's going to be a great game. Go ahead. One more thing before I forget. The weather forecast is meant to be sunny and hot. When was the last time you can remember it didn't rain on a maple ball? I sent somebody. You never said that. I I sent I sent somebody because I'm I'm supposed to be in Sinioke. I sent somebody the weather forecast. I was like, "Is this for real? Like, what is it really like in Sinioke?" And they said, "I never know until I step outside." No, I'm taking a, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm taking an umbrella anyway. It says say, say, say sunny. It's supposed to be nice and sunny outside, and then you get there and it's like raining, like raining yeah. and gray. Cats and dogs. <laughs> yeah. And that's a totally okay. different game. I know we didn't we didn't talk about that, but that 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 could change a lot of that game too. That would it make rain. If it rains, then it it would be closer to Chris's score, a hundred percent. Like I think yeah. that if if it became a game where you can't throw the ball, it would put the crocodiles in it and advantage it. It's just not even fair, mostly because yeah. you still can't tackle Chris Christian Powell. Yeah. Imagine trying to tackle yeah. him if he's wet. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah. It's not it. I mean, it's just not even fair. But that's it for the show. If you enjoyed it, uh, follow us wherever you listen or watch your podcast, and don't forget to rate us five stars, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. And if you don't do any of that and you just put comments, but you don't follow us, that makes you a hater. And if you if you're one of the people, you know who you are. And I'm sorry I had I had to say that, but you know. We 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 lose a lot of our time putting this show together for you guys to enjoy a little something something. And if you're gonna hate, at least follow us. Like if you're gonna hate, that's cool, but you know, subscribe, like something. Uh yeah. hey, they hating, but they still watching. Still I mean, watching. Still watching. But click the subscribe button, man. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So or at least share it. Or share or it. To share it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, share it to a non hater. Somebody that you know? just Appreciate the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> yeah, we we do appreciate the feedback, and we've been getting a lot of that lately. And that obviously means that people are enjoying at least something about the content, even if you don't like it. Sometimes it's fun to not like stuff, and we're okay with that. You can follow us on the gram and Facebook at American Football in Finland. Um, I don't know what our YouTube channel is called, but if you type in American Football in Finland, we show up on YouTube. I don't think we have a custom one yet because we don't have enough subscribers. So click subscribe so we can have a YouTube channel that says American Football in Finland. I think yeah. I'm not stop sure. Stop hating. And tell them to stop yeah. hating. And stop hating. So <laughs> until next time, never forget T I
F. We gone. And we gone. And we gone. <laughs> American football in Finland.